Good morning, YouTube. Woo! Look at that hairdo, man. I've been two days have not have not stepped through the shower, but I bird bathed a little bit. Lenny's not around. I bird bathed a little. Uh the dog. Uh yeah, this dog. Like, so anyway, I, I was in dreamland. A dumber than a rock sometimes, I swear. I look in the mirror and go, how could I miss this? I mean, I saw it. How could I not realize that the dog's entire body was covered with ringworm? How, how did I not know that? I, 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 I got up, boom. But I know now. <laughs> I know now. Ah! Anyway, and I did think her feet looked weird. I mean, they didn't look like there was lesions or anything on her feet. It just, they just looked strange. But what is, so then what happened, what happened was, and what, what it appears is though, when there's fungal, and a fungal infection on the skin, and it's not to the point where there's lesions everywhere, just maybe over here in this area, it's literally invisible on the skin surface until it gets deep enough, but it's still there. And it'll cause hair loss on the dogs. And, but I think, and I thought, I thought her feet looked strange, just not, she just didn't have pretty feet. Well, now they're getting prettier because I realized there was a layer of fungus on the bottom of each toe pad that I looked at. I was like, because after you start treating it, the stuff you see, like I shampooed her with tea tree oil shampoo, right? And I got it all over her body, all over, and I let it sit for five minutes and I rinse. I did this a couple of times and I realized, I'm like looking at her bottom of her feet a few days later. I'm going, why are her toe pads not smooth and why are they yellow? And I'm like, Ew, they look yellow like hmm, a friend of mine's feet that has fungus all over their feet. That the yellow, it's yellow, just thick, dry. People say it's callus. It's callus. It's fungus. I don't know about calluses, but it's it's fungus. Some type. Of fun, I don't know what kind. I don't know, kind, I don't know how many kinds there are, but it's fungus. And her feet, they look just like that kind of fungus. I'm like, ah! But anyway, so I was like, oh, shit. So this is what I realized a few days ago. Well, yesterday I realized it was on her toe pad. I go, how could this not be on her feet if it's everywhere? It's under her throat because, and then I realized it was so thick under her throat because she was scratching with the foot that had the, and I'm going, oh, so I'm back in the tub with more of this. So then I, I realized, I said, oh shit, Lenny's like, bring out the colloidal silver, holy shit. But she was already drinking some because she had a relentless bladder infection. I'm going, oh shit, I can't, why does this pus keep intermittent? Out of her pee pee, and why is she peeing on the anyway? We got it, we got it. Yeast fungal detox by Nature's Sunshine. I found I was like, what can I give her? I'm thinking olive leaf extract. Like I wanted to give her something internal for the ringworm because as I shampooed it where it was obvious on her back, you could see the bare skin and the flakes on her back. I'm like, all right, it's all running down her back. We'll get it. But I shampooed her all over. <laughs> well, where it was invisible at the time. Several days after being treated with tea tree shampoo, it reared its angry, ugly head all over. You could see the lesions being angry because I hit it with tea tree oil and then making themselves obvious. And I was like, oh, because Lenny's like, what are those marks on her belly? And I was like, oh, shit. Sanitize the house. But I tried not to get too freaky about it. I just, you know, I washed the bed clothes, the dog's bed clothes. And they have not been allowed on our bed. And I'm, she's walking all over the tile floor with her fungus feet. And I'm walking around barefoot. But I'm like, I'll be all right. I'll be all right. Terrain theory, right? I mean, if my terrain is not too filthy, I won't contract this thing. So far, nobody's got it. But anyway, I'm not, I'm not too, too, it was just so, oh, and, and it was just so much. I just couldn't believe that it just appeared everywhere. And the more I shampooed her, the more obvious it became. And then it began abating. Like by the third shampoo, it was, it did just, the first shampoo made it, made the little pop, things pop to life. And then every time I shampoo her every day after that, they get, they get a little less, a little less. But when I took, I put colloidal silver in a big spray bottle, man, I sprayed it all over her body. Oh, kabam. That particular, whatever strain ringworm she's got said, oh, silver's the ticket, girl. So. I also took the dog beds out and put them in the fiery blazing sun and let them burn up for a few hours. Again, nothing survived that kind of heat. And uh, she's coming along. But I did just want to say, for those of you that have run across this, if you find uh, a stray animal who's pretty fucked up, assume that they've got ringworm. And the interesting thing was, it's not on her ears. Like, there's no lesions. Like, her hair is very thin all over her body. Like, she's bald. She's bald. Her ass end is bald. But there was no... But now the hair is growing back like crazy. 
But I do think it's on her muzzle, even though we can't see lesions or any kind of weird skin. So I'm going to be spraying her face with silver. And her hair's getting thicker. Her hair's growing back. And she's just going to be the prettiest girl. And her feet are just going to turn out to be pretty princess feet when I get done. I should make a little video clip of it with the color of her toe. I just, this is kind of informative for people that just never ran into this before. Like, what is this? And oh my God. And like, I went online to look and it's like, oh, if you have a dog with, I got to quarantine the dog and it's recommended that you wear a mask and gloves. And I was like, really? Really? If it was that contagious, every dog would have it everywhere. So I realize that it's contagious, but at the same time, I'm just going to shampoo Georgie every day with tea tree shampoo. And that's it. I mean, yeah, they're rubbing bodies together and they don't have a lot of hair on their chest and they're holding you, hugging each other and biting and whatever. But I just like, hey, look, you know, life is life. I'm, I'm treating them both internally. Georgie's on a half a dose of the yeast fungal detox and that I'm giving to a cookie and it's all going to work out, you know? I mean, it's all going to work out because I've had cats that had it before and the vet freaking out. This is years ago when I used to go to the vet for every little teeny thing and I had to give them all, the, all six cats had to get internal treatment and blah, blah. It was just ridiculous. I'm thinking, would they really have caught it? I don't know. They weren't that, they weren't touching each other the way Georgie and Cookie do. At any rate, um, ringworm, it sucks shit, man, but, uh, it's very treatable. Just keep washing them with the tea tree oil. There's a, um, lemongrass oil. There's, you know, I had this, where'd it go? Here it is. This stuff from Wonderside that I, th it didn't help Georgia a damn bit last year. Not a single bit did it help her skin at all. But this year, it's got the ingredients that kills the fungus. Because see, Georgia didn't have fungus, right? I don't know. It has neem, lemongrass, cedar. Anyway, fabulous ringworm. It, it doesn't mention ringworm on there, probably because it's not allowed to. Because you can't say that it cures ringworm. Oh, yes, it gets the law to say something like that. This will probably get taken down for medical misinformation. I'll be like, oh no. Karen is lying to us about neem oil again. Ah!